all the cool kids are rating and reviewing Marijuana Today Daily on iTunes. You're a cool kid, aren't you? Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Wednesday, October 18th, 2017, and you're tuned in to episode 354 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is the news that the U.S. Department of Justice has admitted that the federal government should not have prosecuted five Washington state residents on a series of charges related to the 2012 bust-up of their medical marijuana grow site. The five residents, who became known as the Kettle Falls Five, were arrested after local police raided a home in 2012 and found 70 marijuana plants growing nearby. At the time of the police raid, medical marijuana was legal in Washington state and had been for 14 years. In a legal brief filed on Monday, the Department of Justice copped to the fact that their prosecution of the Kettle Falls Five was illegal due to the Rohrabacher-Fard Amendment, now known as the Rohrabacher-Blumenauer Amendment, which prevents the federal government from spending money going after people who follow state medical marijuana laws. Sadly, one of the five defendants, Larry Harvey, died in 2012 from cancer. One of the Kettle Five took a plea deal and testified on behalf of the prosecution, with the remaining three defendants being sentenced in 2015 to terms ranging from a year and a day to 33 months in jail. Thankfully, the three sentenced have remained out of jail while their appeal has worked its way through the courts. Maybe not surprisingly, the DOJ's brief does not suggest that the charges be dropped, but instead wants the case kicked back to a federal district court. We'll report back on this one as things resolve. The reverberations continue from Monday's ousting of Mass Roots CEO Isaac Dietrich, which came about as Mr. Dietrich reportedly tried to move first to fire the company's board of directors after he got wind of his impending firing over the weekend. As I reported yesterday, the main point of contention between Mr. Dietrich, who founded the company back in 2013, and his board of directors seemed to be the recent acquisition of legislative tracking service Canaregs for $12 million in Mass Roots stock. Marijuana Business Daily is reporting that that acquisition, which hadn't yet closed leading up to this week's fireworks, is now dead in the water. With Canaregs founder Amanda Osterwitz, who was to be named Mass Roots president under the New Deal, telling Marijuana Business Daily, quote, With the tumultuous nature of what's going on over there, we can't stay in this agreement. I'm a business owner and I have to do what's right for my business, unquote. One of the interesting angles on the story is that Mass Roots has not yet filed any paperwork with the SEC as of last night, declaring the change in leadership. This is a great story to click over in full. Our final top story of the day brings us out to California, where wildfires continue to burn and where tens of thousands of people already affected start the work of recovering and rebuilding their lives. As I've reported on a number of times, one of the ways that the fires are hitting folks involved in legal marijuana particularly hard is the fact that it's nearly impossible to ensure state legal cannabis against losses like this. In response to that fact, the California Growers Association launched a crowdfunding campaign on the site UCaring to raise money to help some of the 300 farms they estimate have been hit, and by Monday had garnered more than $10,000 from around 50 donors. It was right around then that Hezekiah Allen, executive director of the Growers Association, received word that his campaign was being closed and all funds returned to donors because marijuana. The message from you caring read, quote, current U.S. federal law prohibits the purchase and sale of cannabis and cannabis extracts. Subsequently, we pay is unable to process payments connected to the production, sale or consumption of cannabis, even in situations where such activities would be permitted under state law, unquote. Mr. Allen's protestations that the fundraiser has nothing to do with the production, sale or consumption of cannabis have so far gone unanswered by you caring. He set up an alternative fundraising site on NationBuilder that we'll post a link up to on our website and Twitter page. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, the MJ Today Daily Century Club, those generous patron listeners giving at the $100 a month level and higher. Century Club members enjoy knowing that they are helping to ensure the survival and thrival of this podcast, our weekly show, Marijuana Today, and our popular email newsletter, the MJ Today Media Newsfeed. 
But like I mentioned earlier this week, Century Club members also get $200 a month in ad credit every month that rolls over and never expires. That ad credit can be used on any of our media properties and is seriously the best money you can spend in marijuana media marketing. If you want to reach all the right movers, shakers, and decision makers in legal cannabis, there's no better place to do it than with us. We have a seriously refined audience that's made up primarily of highly educated, high-earning folks who are either currently working in the industry or who are actively trying to make the jump. Joining the Century Club is a great way to extend your marketing budget and to dip your toes into the world of podcast and newsletter sponsorship. Just swing over to mjtodaydaily.com and find that big blue button at the top of the page that says, become a patron. Sign up at the $100 a month level and higher, and boom, you're in the club. Once again, just open up mjtodaydaily.com, big blue button, $100 level. Thanks so much to our current Century Club members, as well as to all of our awesome patron listeners. You really do make this show possible. Thanks for that. All right, time for the Blitz. During a meeting held yesterday in Michigan, that state's Medical Marijuana Licensing Board laid out the proposed startup capital requirements for the five types of new marijuana business licenses to be given out under their new program next year, with the range running from $150,000 on the low end for the 500-count cultivator license type all the way up to $500,000 for cultivators licensed to grow 1,500 plants. Want to open up a dispensary? That's going to require you to have just $300,000 in startup funds. Some members of the board pushed back on the high levels of required capital, saying that some existing medical dispensaries could have a hard time coming up with that amount. The board meets again on November 28th and will begin accepting applications on December 15th. We'll be tracking this one closely. Alan Brockstein over at New Canvas Ventures has a great story up about the recent drop in price seen in Canadian licensed medical marijuana companies publicly trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange. A lot of media outlets are attributing the drop to the recent announcement that the exchange would start cracking down on any listed Canadian medical marijuana companies with any kind of holdings in U.S. marijuana markets, but Alan thinks the lower prices are because of a glut of new shares recently issued by various Canadian medical marijuana companies. This is a good one to open up in full for all the details and numbers. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily. The Hawaiian Department of Health just gave the green light to that state's second medical marijuana testing company, with Farm Labs Hawaii LLC now joining Steep Hill Hawaii in servicing their nascent medical marijuana industry. Hawaii's medical marijuana industry has gotten off to a bit of a slow start and, in recent months, built up a choke point of production that was waiting for testing labs to come online. The addition of a second testing lab, with a third expected to come earlier next year, should help get things going nicely. The state of Pennsylvania just approved their first licensed cultivator as they too spool up their new medical marijuana industry. Yesterday, Governor Tom Wolf's office announced that the state's Department of Health has given license to Cresco Yeltra's 40,000-square-foot cultivation facility. The company says they plan on growing 30 strains and expect their first harvest to be commercially available sometime in February. Jumping up to my corner of the country here in Maine, we have news that Legalize Maine, one of the activist groups that successfully pushed through last year's adult use ballot initiative, has come out against the proposed set of rules and regulations for the industry set to go before state lawmakers next week for final approval. Legalize Maine's leader Paul T. McCarrier said that the state should instead design the system based on the ballot initiative's language. Specifically, Mr. McCarrier criticized the new rules that require towns to opt in to allowing for legal marijuana businesses rather than having to opt out. He also took exception with the added 10% wholesale tax. A new report from Viridian Capital Advisors pegs the amount of money raised this year within the North American cannabis industry at $1.8 billion, up from $720 million the year before. According to their analysis, not only are there more individual funds being raised, but the size of the average fund is getting bigger, now landing somewhere right around $6.7 million, up from last year's average of just $3 million. Finally for today, MassLive picked up on comments made by Boston Police Commissioner William Evans, who, while speaking on a Boston public radio show, said that he now smells marijuana everywhere he goes, from whiffs caught on the Boston Common to public events like parades. Police Commissioner Evans also expressed frustration with people driving under the influence of cannabis, saying, quote, there's no way to test them, 
unquote. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with the end tomorrow with another information-packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, the MJ Today Century Club, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the illustrious ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, Become a Patron. I'm your host, Jay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.